Hey guys, so today I just wanted to go over something which I, me and my Discord actually made using communal labor. So basically we decided to make an EU4 tier list. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, highest tiers were in blue, then green, then, um, then yellow, then orange, and then it could be lower in red. And so this is twofold. It's one for a teams game where we have one of the top three tiers on each team or one of the top three levels on each team, but also this is just a general multiplayer uh, tier list in case you want to use this or something. So I thought I'd just go over this. So start, we have England. England's pretty self-explanatory. England's a very large nation with massive army, massive navy, large defensive power, and can easily just colonize and just be alone in, in EU4 multiplayer game and just build a big navy and basically stop anyone from really destroying them. Uh, of course, they have to fight France, and France is next on the list. This isn't in any particular order. France is very strong, has a massive vassal storm. Great ideas. So France is definitely a very strong pick for multiplayer. Next, of course, is the Ottomans. The Ottomans themselves are insanely powerful. They have great ideas, and basically, if you don't have any people to the east of them, they can just expand like crazy. The Ottomans are just so strong early game, and they can really just conquer Persia so quickly. And of course, the next would be the Timurids. The Timurids themselves, I think, are very strong, but if you you have a bad player on them it could really screw them up because they have a lot of potential to fall apart uh after the timrids we have muscovy muscovy is of course large and secluded similar to britain where it's in russia russia i mean you have a lot of troops they may not be the best but if they play their cards right it could turn out very strong for a russia game because russia just has free range to expand basically into siberia because the strongest nation there besides for if you have a ming player Ming, of course, is usually very rarely allowed in multiplayer, so in this case we just put it in the tier list because Ming itself is the strongest nation in the world and probably is the strongest nation in the world just AI for 200 years because it has 150, 200 force limit. It's crazy how strong Ming is. Next is Poland. Poland, of course, very early on gets Lithuania under PU. Uh, they have other vassals. They get Moldovia as a march. They're a very strong nation. With good ideas, they can get Hungary under their uh, under their vassal swarm too. It's just Poland is such a strong nation, of course. But the only problem is it's sandwich. But it depends who you have. Next is Austria. Austria can get Hungary, Bohemia under their PUs. Uh, they're the emperor of the HRE at the start, which gives them a bonus for future elections. They have great ideas to maintain this, and they just get a massive army at the beginning because of this. Even if it's kind of hard for them to maintain. The next would be the Mamluks. The Mamluks are very strong too, and if they expand right and they defend properly, they can probably hold off an Ottoman player. They're of course in Egypt, so they're the strongest nation in North Africa by far, but of course there's threats looming of the Ottomans, maybe even Ethiopia, if a player is good enough. And the last one of the high blue tiers would be Castile. Uh, the reason why uh, these other nations I'll explain in a minute, but for Castile itself, Castile is very strong, can easily colonize and expand a very powerful nation. Uh, and Spain separately it gets peed over Aragon if there's no player on Aragon. If there's a player, of course, the Iberian wedding won't happen. Next, of course, in the green tier, which is high tier, but not as high. And so for our teams game, we made a rule that blue tiers and world power cannot ally or cannot be in a team with blue tiers and regional powers because that's too strong. So now below the blue tier thing, we have Aragon. Aragon is a very powerful nation, but it's surrounded by stronger neighbors in Castile, at least just in base troops because Aragon has Naples uh, in Iberia and France. Aragon has a big navy, but being surrounded by these strong nations and like past MPs I've played with my group, Aragon just got wrecked by France. Then we have Ashikaga. Ashikaga, of course, is very strong and Japan is just a very strong start, but depending on who you have, it can be limited and Ashikaga needs to unify. So at the start, it's not nearly as strong for MP, especially if someone just intervenes very early on. Then we have Janpur. Janpur, of course, North Northern India, very powerful nation, starts off with a massive army, good ideas, can easily expand. Uh, and similarly for the next two, Bamanis and Vijayanagar, they are both in India, both very powerful. If you have a lot of players in India, then it kind of complicates things because they're very strong, but they kind of will just have very early bloody wars because of all the jungle in India. Moving on to the yellow tier, this of course isn't the best list. We had disagreements about this because we had about eight, nine people working on this. So I moved some things and people moved some things back. We have Janzao. And Janzao itself is the strongest Manchu nation, can easily form Manchuria. And if you don't have a Ming player, it could they could abuse this to quickly form the Qing. This happened in one of our games where the Janzao player just abused uh, 
abuse breaking truces against the AI. And of course, for our MP, we don't allow breaking truces, at least for players. But abuse this, and Janzo can just very quickly expand and conquer China. Next is Venice. Venice is I debatable. I think it honestly should be at the bottom tier. Debatable could be lower. Because Venice is a strong nation, but Venice itself uh, lacks the strength of its neighbors, the Ottomans and Austria, for example, but at least its navy can hold off. It's it's strong and it has potential, but it depends on how you play it. In one of our games, Venice did very well. In the other game, Venice did horribly. So it really just depends. And the next is Delhi. I think Delhi is strong, but it has to do with early term crises with Sirhan. Uh, and it's just, Delhi just doesn't have as many men just simply early on as its other Indian counterparts. Next is Burgundy. Burgundy is strong, but similarly to people like Venice uh, Bur or Aragon, Burg uh, Burgundy does not start off with nearly enough men to take on France alone. So you need to make those allies. And with its vassals, if you play the Burgundian succession incorrectly, it can completely screw up a player. So you need to know how to play it. And for me, I played Burgundy in our last MP and I died horribly. And that's because I just couldn't stand up to France. And uh, me, I was allied with Aragon, but France was allied with Castile, and we just couldn't win. And finally is Denmark. Denmark, I wouldn't consider a world power if you have a Sweden or Norway player. But with no Sweden or Norway player, Denmark is definitely a world power simply because even if it's the lowest tier, because Sweden and Norway give Denmark very early on, especially a massive fighting potential. Now onto the next tier, which we called regional powers. I would also call this mid-tier we have high tier mid-tier low tier and then just kind of random nations we have sweden sweden is a very strong nation but it depends on who's playing other nations because if you have a player denmark who doesn't want to let you be independent or etc uh, it can really cause real problems so this is why we made the well, well uh this is why we have rules about if you can play sweden uh if you have a denmark player before you we don't let a sweden because, or the Denmark player can choose if they want a Sweden or not, because it kind of screws the Denmark player. But anyway, uh, Sweden's blue. These are all blue regional powers who can't ally blue world powers in our sort of team weird thing. But just in general, Sweden's strong, but not nearly as strong as nations like France, the Ottomans, Timurans, etc. Then we have Brandenburg, another nation that I think should almost be a world power. Uh, it's debatable. Brandenburg very early on is weak though, but as time passes, if Brandenburg has the right allies, can expand properly. Brandenburg can be easily become the strongest nation in the world as Prussia or maybe even Germany. Then we have Bohemia, another nation that's very strong. Honestly, Bohemia is probably an equal strength to nations like Venice with a large army. But as I've said before, they're surrounded by strong enemies, uh, Austria, Poland, even Brandenburg in cases, depending on who they ally. Next is Korokinu. Korokinu also, of course, has great defensive terrain. Uh, is a very large nation, uh, but as with other nations, they're sandwiched between the Ottomans, Mamluks, um, and the Timurids. So, I mean, not to mention Ajam, who's the next nation. Ajam itself is strong, but has similar problems. Uh, it's just not nearly as strong as a world power, but still is a good pick if you play your cards right. Then we have Holland. Holland or the Netherlands, or why did I say the Netherlands? Uh, just Holland. It's not the Netherlands yet. Holland is very strong and similar to Portugal, who's next on the list. They share uh, colonial capacity in the future early game. They are very weak. They have great naval power, uh, especially late game. But early game, Holland is quite weak. And if you have a Burgundy player or other players around you, they may be able to um, stop you from forming the Netherlands. Portugal, of course, is strong, but if you have a rival slash aggressive Castile early on who may be allied to France, Portugal, just there's no chance that Portugal can truly survive, at least on the mainland, and that severely hampers your um, progression and expansion. Now we move on to high tier, but not highest tier. So these actually we allow to ally world powers in this whole team thing. We I, I think team games are interesting. We haven't done one yet, but I've done one in the past where you just have a preset alliance rule, so there's no betrayal. And it's more equal. Uh, we have Oirat. Oirat, of course, is a strong horde, which starts off with Mongolia as its vassal. Uh, Oirat has good ideas, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a player Ming, Oirat just does, doesn't stand up to Ming or even to Jian Zhao. Uh, it's good, but it depends on who else you have around them. Now we have the Pope. The Pope is one of the stronger... Uh, one of the stronger... Uh, 
uh, Italians. I mean, I would consider the Pope very strong, but the problem is the Pope doesn't have much expansion path to the south. It has Naples, which is owned by Aragon or maybe later Castile. Uh, to the north, there is some expansion, but Venice, Savoy are very strong early game or Austria. And it's just hard for the Pope to really break out of this unless they get very lucky or they get good allies and they kill the other Italians or they colonize, which I mean, is kind of hard as the Pope because you have to get around people like Portugal, Castile. Uh, now we have Hungary. Hungary is good, but Hungary uh, just cannot stand up to Austria, which who can enforce a union or to an Ottoman player who's just significantly stronger than a Hungarian player. Uh, Hungary is okay, but as I mentioned, it's just sandwiched like other nations between Austria, Poland, and the Ottomans. And Austria itself can just enforce a PU on a player through um, its focus tree or the event. Something like that. <laughs> I haven't played Hungary in a while or Austria. Now we have Arissa. I actually played Arissa. Arissa is interesting because it's one of the few nations, if you play a, a under 100 dev nation a game, which is insanely strong. Orissa has a significant vassal swarm, but itself isn't that large of a nation. Has a massive early game army size for a nation of under 100 dev, uh, including its vassals. Except, unfortunately, it has very little manpower. And similar to other nations in India, it suffers from just massive attrition in player wars. So Orissa is okay. But if you have to fight another big player, if it is a player like uh, Jampur or uh, Bamanis, you just won't stand up to it because you'll just die with significantly less manpower gain now we move on to killa i honestly think killa should be a low world power because it's very isolated from the rest of the world uh it has significant expansion slash colonial power in uh south africa uh makes great income and if it can conquer the gold mines by it it's just insanely strong so in like in mar mercy some mp game killa honestly was competing for naval hegemon uh and just had a massive navy i mean of course army isn't great for Kiwa, but Kiwa is a naval nation i mean it's it's literally just it's so it's it's a good naval nation uh now we move on to savoy savoy uh i think is a very strong pick honestly it could even be higher they have a very large army they have defensive mountains in case you have to fight france as long as you have decent allies you can honestly hold against france they uh, are one of the stronger nations in their part of Italy. Of course, Venice is around them, but they're stronger than Milan, Genoa, etc. They have vassals. Savoy is just a very strong pick. Uh, now to Tunis. Tunis, of course, is in North Africa. Good navy. And Tunis is one of the nations in this game that can actually raid, similar to the other Barbary states, to Lemson, I think. Uh, and uh, I, I honestly... <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, maybe maybe there's one more, but Tunis, uh, very strong, very strong naval nation. Uh, if you don't have a player Ottomans, usually it's very easy to ally the AI. Uh, of course, Tunis cannot compete with naval uh, powers of the Mamluks, early game, Aragon, Castile, Portugal, Venice, uh, the Ottomans. But it is a strong pick, and if you play your cards right, you could probably conquer your portion of North Africa and expand into Central Africa. On to the next nation, which I also think is a very strong pick for, uh, of course, as a regional power, is the Teutonic Order. The Teutonic Order early on it has strong ideas, uh, is in a strong area. Uh, of course, you have to deal with Poland and Lithuania, and that's the main problem with the Teutonic Order. And there is the Danzig event more recently. But if you get a player Livonia and you get a few of the other Germans to work together with you, you can easily defeat a Poland. Now into Malwa. Malwa, similar to Orissa, is a decent nation in India, but just does not stand up to the stronger nations in India. It has, um, I think, a few vassals, but it's just not in the same strength. Uh, now we just kind of grouped everyone together, the other Manchus. The, Manchu, the other Manchus can easily form Manchuria, but they have worse ideas and they're smaller than Janzao. So it's just harder and slower. I mean, and which means that other players, like if you have a Japan player or an Oirat player, have time to catch up and maybe even challenge a Manchu. Uh, onto, onto Mali now. Mali, um, similar to I, um, similar to other nations like Kiwa, is pretty secluded. So early game, you have um, many expansion paths, of course, unless you have a Songhai. Mali is the strongest nation in um, Central Africa. Stronghai or Songhai itself is very strong but Mali starts off with gold mines uh and weaker a few weak small neighbors which can expand to quickly uh now we just put indonesian countries uh in regional powers which i agree to this is like uh 
Uh, I mean, it's for it depends because certain nations can easily expand, but uh, Brunei or uh, Malacca themselves are decently strong uh, if you let them expand too much out of control. But if you have multiple players in Indonesia, it's much harder for nations um, like Brunei or Malacca to expand so quickly. If you only have one player in, of course, they will be able to conquer all of Indonesia. Uh, next on to the Great Horde. I honestly disagree with this pick, but this is where we ended up placing it uh, in green or high tier regional power. The Great Horde, of course, has a very decently sized army, but has to match up with the other hordes in the area who are around the same size. So this just should be general for most of the hordes in the area. Uh, and Russia, and Russia's a looming threat. Uh, on to Ethiopia. Ethiopia, I think, is a uh, high tier regional power. It's definitely not stronger than the Mamluks or Ottomans, but it possesses uh, one, uh, a decent size, decent vassals, and can easily beat most of its neighbors to the south and expand, not to mention as Coptic ideas, and Coptic ideas are pretty fun, so. Or you could form Jewish, uh, because it does have the only Jewish province with Semyon. Now this is, uh, we have Timurid princes. This is kind of varied, because certain Timurid princes are much stronger than others so um transoxiana i think that's how you pronounce it is of course very strong while a nation like coruscant is much weaker but um uh this is why we put it varied we were just got lazy uh now we have florence and florence of course starts off with a very strong military leader and so in multiplayer if you focus military points uh get a military advisor of florence who can be the first to tech four which is crucial because of the morale boost so Florence very early on, if you've ever seen, um, once they did a YouTuber slash big game event, I think it was like 100 people in this castle in Poland and Flurry Worry just popped off as Florence. It was crazy. He just beat so many other nations. So it just proves that if you play your cards right, you can get that tech first and you can just control central Italy with Florence and stop you from beating you up. Next we have Milan. Milan honestly could be even weaker. Milan's an okay nation, but it just doesn't stand up to the strength of its mid-tier uh, neighbors of savoy or its stronger neighbor of venice uh milan is good it just it just doesn't stand up in italy then we have morocco morocco of course starts off with a decent sized army vassals uh and has an easy expansion path just through a little bit of colonization into central africa morocco is a strong nation um uh, and it has a decent navy it just doesn't stand up to its northern neighbors and that's kind of a trend here of strength um now we have for mid-tier italians genoa Genoa itself has colonies, of course, uh, by the Ottomans uh, in the Aegean Sea and up uh, in the Crimea. Crimea, the Crimea, same thing. Uh, it's strong, but of course, it just doesn't have the naval or the army size. I mean, if you play your cards right, make good diplomacy, you can survive as Genoa. Next is Switzerland. Switzerland, of course, has boost to... Uh, uh, mercenaries and Switzerland's just a fun nation to play because you have great defensive uh, terrain uh, you have good troops um, and honestly most people don't even mind killing Switzerland so like so like Switzerland just ends up living then you have Songhai Songhai is just weaker than Mali but it's still a good mid-tier nation it's definitely not one of the weaker nations now we have Inca and Aztec Inca Aztec are I mean it's just in general the Inca nations Cusco um, they're very strong. I mean, I don't ever see multiple people playing in Cusco or the area of the Inca or the area of Mexico, usually in multiplayer, but these nations can become strong, but also the Europeans can easily beat you down if you don't play your cards right. Uh, Bavaria. Bavaria, of course, is a decently strong German, but just doesn't stand up to Bohemia or uh, Austria. And that similarly applies for nations like Saxony, who I don't think are on this list. Now we have Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya honestly could be one higher because it's a very strong nation. Um, of course, modern day Thailand. Um, it's just a very strong nation, which uh, its neighbors don't really match up to it early on. Now we have um, Akiunlu. Akiunlu is okay. I mean, it's not that strong, but in terms of teams, like Akiunlu uh, would obviously be matched up with maybe someone like the Ottomans or the Mamluks, where uh, it's a decent sized nation and can pack some punch. Same with Novgorod, if it's matched up with someone like Russia, because in a teams game, you try to make the teams where um, basically you don't want anyone to be able to expand too much because then it kind of becomes unfair. So you have a Russia and Novgorod, so then Russia cannot expand into Novgorod. That similarly applies for Scotland. Scotland's semi-strong and can wield a, 
like 15, 20,000 men at the start, but it just can't stand up to England. But allied to England, it makes an interesting combo because it has a decent sized army. Um, Ajaran is okay. I mean, it's kind of far away from the uh, stronger neighbors of Ethiopia or maybe even Kilwa, but it just doesn't have that much expansion path. Uh, <laughs> that really applies to Serbia, who's really surrounded but has a decent sized army. Crimea, of course, is a decent sized horde. Decent sized army can't expand into Poland really, but can expand into its other hordes. Uh, Congo, of course, is very secluded and the strongest nation in its part of um, Central Africa. I don't know why I was calling Central West Africa Central Africa earlier, but sorry. But in Central Africa, and easily conquer there. Uh, and Congo honestly can do very well if it expands into West Africa itself. Uh, now moving on to the Mayans. The Mayans are just in a weaker state uh, and their religion is just doesn't give as many buffs or benefits as the aztec religion uh and then telemsen telemsen can raid similarly to tunis but it's smaller weaker and of course it's sandwiched between tunis and morocco now we have provence provence has some vassals but it's land spread out all across france i mean it has very interesting ideas so it can actually form jerusalem if it gets naples so that's fun so not ideas sorry i meant um it has very fun missions, but uh, Provence is just not that strong, but it's good as a backup second person for a team. Now we have Wallachia and Moldova, Moldavia. Moldavia, Moldova is modern day, but <laughs> uh, these are just weaker nations that are pretty sandwiched, but they're okay. Like, I mean, it's hard to form Romania in U4 anyway. Uh, now we consider this mean countries, but it's kind of interesting. We have the Livonian Order. Livonian Order would be a lower tier, so this is the lowest tier. I consider them low tier. Someone change it to meme nations. Uh, Livonian Order is uh, a semi-strong nation. It's just not as strong as the Teutonic Order, uh, but it can get a decent-sized army. Same with uh, the Japanese miners themselves can easily unite Japan. It just takes more time, so it's harder than uh, a strong Ashikaga. Uh, and of course things go wrong if you mess things up, but honestly they should maybe even be in regional power. We have Byzantium. Byzantium of course is sandwiched between the Ottomans. It's very hard to win in multiplayer if you have an Ottoman player. We have Granada, similarly is sandwiched between uh, Morocco, but of course between Castile. A mid-sized smaller horde, we consider this like a no-guy, um, even a Mongolia. These are just weaker nations. They're not that strong, but they can still do some things. That's why in their lower tier. Of course you have all the Irish miners. It's just England is so strong. Ulm, which I think Ulm is, will carry the meme lower tier nations. Ulm is just an OPM, and this applies for all the HRE OPMs. I mean, honestly, obviously the strongest one would be Lubeck. Uh, Lubeck uh, should be more of a regional power, but besides for that, uh, low tier the HRE OPMs, especially when you lose the free city benefits just a week. Albania, uh, I mean, has a great general, but itself is small. Epirus is just tiny. Indian miners are small. Brittany is an okay nation, but it would be like a third cog in a team system. Uh, the knights are the European nation, besides for the pirates that can raid. Um, pirates spawn. Uh, there's like some weird pirate spawning events. I don't even know. The knights are okay. They're just not strong enough to really defend themselves. Uh, Yemen, the Yemeni um, uh, lands are okay. I mean... They're a little bit secluded, but it's not the greatest nation. It has good ideas for income. Uh, Riga, of course, is an OPM. Ryzen is just too small. This similarly applies for the Balkan Myers, the newly added Herzegovina, uh, or other nations uh, outside the Balkans, such as uh, Trebizond or Kandar. Afghanistan is, I don't even know why that's there. That's just a minor for a Timur Prince. Uh, Theodoro is an OPM but they were kind of secluded. It's, uh, and then we just put Arabian Minor, West African Minor, and East African Minor, these smaller nations. We actually put Riga twice. <laughs> That's funny, Ryuku Ryuku is an OPM off, now this is the lowest, lowest tier, Ryuku is an OPM off Japan. We have the Siberian Miners, of course, are very weak. Cyprus is very weak. Croatia is under Hungary in a PU. It's kind of hard to get out, especially since Hungary usually outlies its Austria, uh, Ragusa, and then just kind of going down for all the OPN's small nations. So uh, the only thing is that this tier list missed, which uh, either got deleted or messed up, or Saxony or a few other German states that would be regional slash lower tier. Of course, Saxony would be like a very low tier regional power. And um, that pretty much covers most of the world. Uh, yeah, of course, there's nations like Vietnam or... Uh, or um, modern day Laos, which are okay nations, or nations like Bengal. I would consider Bengal a regional power. It's strong, but not as strong as other Indians, but it's 
it's in a very good spot for uh, uh, expansion, but those nations aren't as strong. Uh, we're still working on this, but I just wanted to share this tier list, which we spent some time working on. Of course, it needs more work, uh, but there are a lot of nations in U4, and this just covers probably 50, 60, and we group some together. So yeah, uh, tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you think any nations should be higher or lower, like if you think Brandenburg should be considered a high tier, or... Um, or especially for MP or for a team's game or in our team's game, each team gets one of each, a world power, regional power and a meme country or a high tier, low tier, mid tier of um, a high tier, like a highest level nation, a mid level nation, a low level nation. We're still working on it. Uh, if you actually want to put some input in, join my discord because uh, the link's just in there if you want to work on this. Of course, if someone messes it up, I'll refer to it. But right now we're just going on the honor system. So don't mess it up too much, but yeah. Uh, Hope you enjoyed and tell me what you think. Peace.